Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to Junior Don'ts a Spark. Today I'm sitting down with Dan Tuma, founder and CEO of Dan Tuma Media Company. Dan Tuma Media is a photography and video production company which serves clients all over Michigan. Welcome, Dan. Ah, uh, tell me, what got you interested in photography? So, in the fourth grade, I was uh, messing around with one of my parents' video cameras and it was uh, one of the first Sony Handycams and I realized quickly how much fun it was to make home videos with friends and apparently in the fourth grade I told my mom at the time that I, I love the way yeah I said that I love the way the world looks through the eye of the lens and I said it just like that I don't know where that came from um, <laughs> but uh, it's from there I kind of just uh, moved on into photography and my interest in video production as well um, learning about the industry but also you know how I can use these tools to inspire others I want to come back to that but what did you see through the eyes of the lens that arrested you and it fascinated you yeah I would have to say it was just being able to see the world in a different perspective through a type of technology uh, and equipment that is the video camera and being able to you know adjust shutter and aperture settings even at that age I was very in involved and intrigued with how the intricacies of this equipment works and yeah it really just inspired me interesting and then your philosophy yeah, and so it's just carried into my yeah, philosophy with my current business, Dan Tuma Media, which is to inspire others through impacting stories. And I love telling stories. I tell people that I am a uh, professional storyteller. And so that's part of my uh, title almost, <laughs> other than, of course, owner and CEO of Dan Tuma Media. What, interested, what interests people when you tell a story? Great question, yeah. I mean, it is so varied when it comes to uh, the story that needs to be told. You know, people engage emotionally with your why, not your what. Um, so I'll, you know, drop the name. Simon Sinek is one yes. of my favorite uh, inspirational entrepreneurs of the world. Uh, he, he has quoted, people buy why you do it, not what you do. And I love living by that, too. So how, how do you put it in practice? So typically, I, I live by purpose, and I have a strong faith in God. Uh, and so that also gives me a lot of purpose uh, every day. Um, and so have, knowing why I do what I do, knowing that God has given me gifts that I can utilize and help others with, but also that these gifts can be used to harness that inspiration and advertise or promote someone else has been a, a huge gift for me. So. so the purpose is in helping others through video stories? Exactly. Is that what you meant? Uh, it is. I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love documentaries and, and telling the story. I th it's a new, not new, I guess you could say, but it's, um, it's my way of telling stories is by um, selling the why they do what they do first and then ending a video with what they do. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. And these are historic or current? Uh, current, yeah. Uh, very modern and very, uh, you know, uh, whether it's a nonprofit agency or if it's a, you know, for profit large corporation, any way to uh, advertise and promote them um, because I think people in my industry, 
and for my audience, they like to hear a story. You know, people uh, trust you when you tell a fun or engaging story. And I think that uh, allows the audience to believe in what you believe in and understand your purpose. And if they believe what you believe, then they'll most likely want to work with you or follow you. Where would you see your videos? So when you're hired, where do they use the videos? Right, so uh, social media is a huge tool, as we know nowadays. You know, it's a huge uh, market and it's worldwide. I think that another one is uh, obviously television. And whether that's a 30 second spot or a 60 second spot, but it's been uh, a, a great tool for that. But honestly, I would say 75% of the video production that I release and deliver is shown on websites, internet, and then also through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Pinterest. All these platforms for social media engagement have been really crucial for engaging a broader audience for, their or for that organization or that business that I've worked with. Did you feel you, or how do you keep yourself sort of culturally fresh so that, <laughs> I mean, in a technological sense, not the how-to, but the possibilities I therein in, in um, what I want to say, yeah. in, in communication? Sure. So I am very involved with uh, Adobe and then also with other types of email newsletters. I love to stay involved with uh, local uh, companies as well that have knowledge about the industry, but I follow a lot of other professionals from around the world. I'm very um, intrigued by entrepreneurship in general. Oh, interesting, and yeah. I, uh, I would have to blame my, dad, my dad's side of the family for the entrepreneurial bug that's inside me, that, that drive to get up every day and do the best to um, you know, do what I believe in, which is my business. And um, yeah, but I also, do, I love to listen and I love to also share my wealth, which by wealth I mean my, my knowledge and what I've learned. So. And how did you take the notion to start your company? Ooh, man, this is going back a little bit which is great, I, lo I love that question. I would have to say it starts about 12 years ago when I actually graduated from Delta College right here. Uh, go Pioneers. Yeah. And I uh, realized that video production and photography was something that I was not only passionate about, but I would have to say a little skilled at, you know? Yeah. I, I'm pretty, uh, so that was a driving force to move forward and um, pursue it as a career. And then it was in about fall of 2014 that I realized I wanted to own my own business, be my own boss, and uh, help others promote themselves uh, from my business. Mm -hmm. And you know whether it's through a, a family photo shoot or a corporate promo video, um, or now I'm a certified FAA approved drone pilot. I wanna hear about that. Yes. What, what does that mean in terms of your business or, or licensing? Exactly. So the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, is very strict, I would say, but for good reason, yes. on drone flight and using a UAS um, you know, model or aircraft to take photos and video. And so I own a drone that takes 4K video and it takes high definition photos. Um, yeah, and so that industry goes into everything from real estate, engineering, agriculture, industry, um, and people use these aerial photos and video to really give you that bird's eye view of the scope of either a property or um, an inspirational message of some sort. But the property owner has no say as, as in yes or no, you can photograph my property from on high. Do they or not? Well, it depends. According to your licensing, anyway. Exactly. So uh, it comes down to the uh, airspace. If it's class golf, then usually it's OK. You have to stay no higher than 400 feet in the air. So there's a ceiling of 400 feet. And of course, you have to use common sense. So don't obstruct traffic. Don't obstruct you know, anyone's way of commuting or living peacefully. 
Uh, but typically, if it's a you know military operations area or yeah. restricted area, of course you're going to need permission, or sometimes you just can't fly in those areas because of restricted. When did you get your license? So this, I received my certification last Cert September of 2017. And have you used it? I have, multiple times. And that allows you to go from the infinite to the finite. Exactly. Right. Yes, it really allows you to, when you're doing the storytelling of a business, or if you need to capture, as I said, that aerial perspective, yeah, you can get everything from the the 500,000 square foot building down to one conference room talking about the purpose behind that bi that business. So, Are you aiming to get any other licenses uh, or uh, take any particular training that would amplify opportunity? Well, uh, other than the drone certification uh, with Part 107 in the FAA, um, there are other um, certifications for let's say if I wanted to uh, use specific camera equipment. Um, also, mm -hmm. I, like as a video production photography business, I can go to websites uh, that are also companies and rent equipment that I don't currently own. Mm -hmm. So I can actually you know, sign the paperwork and rent very good equipment for a temporary certain of time. And that's been able to, I've done that a couple times to heighten the quality of my Good work. for you. Thanks. Yeah. I like that you keep trying to improve yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe it's uh, always a work in progress, you know, my business, but also I believe, as I said, my faith in God. He's honing me and refining me to be who He sees me to be, and that's how I believe I've become that the entrepreneur I am today. So, Do you have a spiritual practice? So I am just bare bones Christian. I believe in what the Bible teaches. And I am also a ministry leader with an organization called Youth for Christ. And so that organization helps high school students learn about Jesus, but also we just get to know them. And sometimes I think it's important for the youth of today, talking about positivity um, and the growing Generation Z uh, coming up in the workforce. Uh, we need to have examples of what it what a, a successful but also a positive adult looks like. Um, for an adult, you know, a young 30-something like me to influence a high school student to show them what love looks like, to show them what it means to really care for them, because uh, sometimes they just don't come from a safe environment or a broken home. How do you show that? So I just exude uh, the love that Christ has given me uh, onto them uh, by showing them um, that they matter and that they uh, have a place in the world, they have values, and I, just to spend time with them and listen to what they've been through or their life story can mean the world. Um, I, I've b been in many conversations where I just sit and listen for hours and those two or three hours were meant the world to them. They were heard. Yes. Because no one really listens, as, or uh, we're not listened to the way we hope to be listened to. Exactly. Or enough sometimes. Are these weekly get-togethers? What's the format of the youth group? Right, so for Youth for Christ, uh, it is a weekly, every Monday night event where we actually go to a local church in Auburn Michigan, and we work specifically with Bay City Western High School. And we're looking to expand to Midland High School, Bullock Creek, and Meridian High School, too. Uh, that's, that's in the future. <laughs> it must be great satisfaction for you. It really is. Um, I have been told I have that giving spirit. I yes. love to, I know, naturally as a videographer, photographer, it is a service that I'm giving to someone else to help them in their business, but yeah, I, I've always had that giving uh, heart to help and inspire, um, and I, I really do believe in the power of positivity. What is positivity? To me, I believe positivity is the act of showing respect, uh, honor, and dignity uh, to someone else through our actions, 
and I believe actions do speak louder than our words. But um, I'm a big fan of the word integrity. And I believe being uh, a man or a woman of integrity uh, shows uh, someone the character of what it means to uh, be positive, but also to show that love that we talked about. Would you explain integrity? Because maybe some of the people listening haven't heard that used recently. Right. So I, I would probably define integrity as the ability to, over an extended period of time, show that you are trusted, that you exude the positive respect, um, but also that something I hold dear to my heart, that uh, you treat others the way you would like to be treated. Um, and I think if you do that time and time again, uh, without fail, and show that character every time, which, you know, we're not perfect, but um, if we do that on an extended period of time, that shows the integrity of uh, uh, a woman or a man uh, in that time. What did your parents emphasize to you while you were growing up? Wow, that's an incredible question. Um, you're the first to ask that, <laughs> uh, among other questions. Uh, so um, I, I'm complimenting your questions, by the way, because I appreciate hold that. many interviews. Is I, I'm the interviewee, and so it's awesome to be interviewed. <laughs> um, I would say my parents instilled um, what it meant to have that integrity, but they instilled uh, a sense of freedom in creativity. Um, mm. At a very young age, I, I think my parents realized I'm very right-brained and very creative. And so I think they realized <laughs> we need to give him the freedom to draw on this piece of paper, paint on this canvas. Or uh, like in the fourth grade, they gave me that video camera. And uh, I mean, it was shared among the family. It wasn't mine. Right. <laughs> um, but they gave me that ability to express myself and really uh, entertain what I could do with the arts and with emerging technology like video and photography. Interesting. They were very generous. Very. Yeah. And they showed that love very clearly through their generosity and uh, through what they taught me. What kind of values did they teach you? I know entrepreneurship. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say the values of just um, exuding that positivity, um, showing love whenever you can, um, being, I, I think an important thing that others could take away is being a friend to those that might not like you. Or oh, interesting. to make friends with people that might be opposed to you and your beliefs and to um, basically, yeah, be friendly. But I think also, um, you know, to be trustworthy, respectful, uh, professional. Um, I think that's something my mother definitely instilled in me is what it means to uh, exude professionalism uh, in the workplace, but also, um, uh, well, knowing me, I sometimes do that when I'm on a date with a woman. So. Oh, I want details. <laughs> 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 yeah. What do you mean by professionalism? Or did, what did she mean? Yeah, I think sh she wanted to help me um, especially with the um, Business Professionals of America was an organization that I was very involved in high school. Oh. And I actually was able to go to the national competition um, and senior year I got first place um, in, uh, in Orlando, Florida for economic research. And I mention that because um, that was one of the driving forces during high school that taught me what it meant to do public speaking, how to carry yourself uh, in a meeting, uh, how to be confident but not cocky, if you will. Yes. And how to carry yourself with respect but also um, be able to listen. And I've noticed that um, as a professional, it's important to listen to your customers' needs first and then talk about what you can do to help them. Because as a business owner and any organization or business would agree that, you know, there is a problem that we are the solution to. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. And we can help them uh, by offering our product or services, whatever it is. And what was this high school program called? 
So, and it's still in existence for high school and college students. Mm -hmm. uh, I suggest it to anyone. It's called Business Professionals of America. And I, uh, I had so much fun you know, with my friends while I was presenting both regional, state, and then national conferences. So you re re research companies and talk about them? Exactly, yeah, we would. Good for you. Yeah, we would kind of do realistic, hands-on market research on what's happening in the, in the field. In the field, specifically in North America. Um, and so we focused on that demographic market and kind of went from there. And it was, I learned so much. You had early training on how to be an entrepreneur and be responsible from home, from this class, and your own desires. Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I, now that you mention it like that, it's, yeah, at a young age, I was learning so much about what it meant to be a business owner, and I, hel I definitely um, want to thank a lot of community members from Midland, specifically, uh, that helped me learn what it meant to own a business. Say. Uh, so, Incubate Labs in Midland, Michigan, uh, they are a design consultancy and sort of incubator that helps inventors and small business owners lift off the ground. And they helped me basically learn the first steps of what it meant to own my own business, everything from a writing a business plan to balancing a checkbook. <laughs> uh, important. <laughs> Financials, yes. And then also, you know, just learning what it meant to um, work with the audience in a niche or niche that I wanted to focus on. Because I could be a man of uh, all people, yes. uh, which I, I love that. But when it comes down to it, as a business owner, I need to focus on a specific target audience and to learn and know what that is and then promote myself to those people uh, specifically. Do they help you with finding out? I mean, I always feel government trips you up. <laughs> You know, sure. which licenses or which applications or which forms or which whatever. Who, where do you mm -hmm. get the information to know not only what to do, but how expensive it's going to be? Good questions. Yeah, I mean, I think w the way I approached it, I was very open-minded to my options. Uh, I realized quickly for Dan Tuma Media, I had to go into the LLC route, uh, right. limited liability company. So okay. that means that you know, if I ever I wanted to freeze, pause my company, or move on to another career path, I can basically take my earnings and move on without uh, being fairly involved with the state uh, and federal government. But as an LLC, I'm specifically, uh, I guess, uh, registered, uh, if the term is correct, or uh, the document is considered and signed and uh, approved through the state of Michigan. So specifically, I'm a uh, LLC of Michigan. Um, so if I would have, if I would want to branch out into North America or globally, that's when I would have to do a little bit more <laughs> research on what to do to expand my my company to reach that that audience. Yeah. Oh, and they taught you that. Yes, Incubate Labs. They they taught me what it meant to. Uh, be the LLC for Michigan, but also the tactics of And you work with someone you like for social media. I do. Her name is Heather Arkay from Blue Feather uh, Consulting. Um, Blue Feather is a great company that helps with my social media management, um, but she also does really great web design and development. Um, so I wanted to uh, mention that, but uh, I believe social media, as we all know, I feel at this point, is a very powerful tool. Um, and when it comes to videos and photography, um, the digital media that um, helps engage the audience, I think, is crucial. Um, but whether it's yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other platforms, it's just on the rise. But video is a very critical tool to helping any organization. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've learned a lot uh, from Dan. We learned early on that somehow what he saw through the camera was a world that he could um, 
share his gifts was that entranced him. So it was really nice that early on that he had an enchantment there. He comes from a family that emphasizes entrepreneurship and really a responsible way of living, what he calls, or our mom calls professionalism. And, but that is to live responsibly, educate yourself as they did through this high school business program, and then to build out. He's also very good at giving credit, uh, but also asking for help. So when he got to the point he wanted to start his business, he was mindful to do it carefully. But he comes from a God-centered orientation that says he wants to make people's lives better. So when he makes his videos, he looks for the why before the where and the what, because that's what engages people. His, his thing is to engage with life to make it better through what he calls positivity, which is responsible living with heart, and to really improve people's lives through his personal and his, um, his volunteer time, such as the, the group, the, the teenage group at the church. So I do want to thank him for sharing this because you can really live a meaningful life and a life of enthusiasm and passion in multiple areas. And that's what he showed us today. He has the, um, the professional side, he has the youth side, and we didn't get into it much, but the dating side. <laughs> <laughs> but wherever you are, remember, look for the spark in life, live it, bring it out of people, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so very much for tuning in and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Do something kind for someone you know and someone you don't know, and thank you again. Thank you, dear Dan. To contact Junia, send her an email at juniadonesthespark at gmail.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, go to www.juniadonethespark.com. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on Junia Dones the Spark. Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.